So is this a part of an album? When is it dropping? Yes, this is an album. I'm looking at my management like, don't look at them. And they're like, yo, don't say anything. No, no, just go with the flow, whatever no, feels yeah, right. Yeah, exactly, exactly. All right, here is your Odyssey check-in. What's up? It's Mike Adam with the man of the hour, Macklemore. You have so many things to uh, celebrate right now. But first, let's talk about uh, uh, fatherhood. Father of three now. Father of three. You're yes. going to have more babies than albums soon. Oh, no, 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 no. No, I'm done. I'm out. All, all done. That's I'm it. out. I'm out. How how was it for you guys, your family, uh, the past couple of years with with COVID, the the political climate? Like, were you guys, uh, you know, in close quarters? Did you how'd you handle everything? Politics were heavy in our house. A lot of debates. Yeah. With our two and four year old. I time. imagine. No. Um, it was uh, the political climate. COVID. Children. How was it? That was a crazy question. That was all over the place. I'm like, damn, that was a that was a a time in our lives that I don't think that, you know, no one could have anticipated. It was crazy, it was insanity, and it was beautiful. I'm normally on the road and don't get to spend that amount of time with the kids like consecutive. So I turned into a full-on chauffeur. Yeah. And I loved it. It was great. I got to like spend, you know, my at the time my youngest was two and a half so i really got to spend two and a half up until now with her or two until now up to up until now with her and it was it was amazing we had great times and it was nuts now were you recording a lot during that process because i was surprised an artist like yourself who i feel like doesn't shy away from tough topics and stuff like that. I, I expected, you know, peak pandemic, 2020, Macklemore's coming out with something. I got something to say, but you were kind of like, you kind of fell back. You were on hiatus a little bit. Yeah, I mean, I recorded a lot of things. I think for for me, and it was a time period where I didn't want to take up space, particularly around the murder of George Floyd. I didn't want to come in and take up space in terms of, um, I, I wanted to support. I was out there. Um, Seattle was definitely a, a moment. You know, we had the chop, we shut down streets, but in terms of actually taking up space and making a record or saying something, it didn't feel like the right time. And I, I wrote a lot. I was in the studio, but I didn't want to in any way come across as like, you know, let me promote something right now. I think yeah. so much of uh, a music, if it's authentic, it should never feel calculated. And I didn't want to take up any space in that moment. I just wanted to support. You think you'll pull like a, a Nas lost tapes one day and come out with that stuff or is it not for the world? It, it, it could be, but I think, yeah, I think a, a lost tapes is a great idea. Yeah. Thank you for that. I got and, you. And I will take it. I am here for you. And no, but I think there's, there's been a ton of music. The one thing that COVID allowed me to do is just record a ton and you know, putting out this next project, this next album, um, there's going to be a lot of stuff uh, left over. So, yeah. a lost tapes makes a lot of sense. Before we talk about music, uh, you were telling me you were doing weird stuff during COVID, during mm. the the lockdown. So, tell me about hairstyles and your beard or lack thereof. You know, I've never had all the follicles in my face. Never have. They just didn't ever fully grow. Um, but so. You know, and I kind of got this like sparse reddish beard <sighs> and I dyed it black and I grew it out. Okay. And I had, you know, if you go to like the iPhone and it tells you like the three years ago, two years ago memories, I had some horrible, horrible beards. I had some horrible mustaches, like caterpillar ferns on my face like it just looked disgusting my family told me i thought they were tripping at the time i thought that i actually looked cool and yeah, yeah. they were telling me the truth and i just wasn't listening because you were in isolation that was the only opinion you were getting so you were like you know if i drop something right now and the world saw me they would think i looked fly yeah and i actually did take a lot of selfies um i was told i looked like david spade there was a lot of really cool comments <laughs> Brutal. <laughs> yeah. Brutal. Um, your oldest is seven now? Seven, yep. And what's she into music-wise? She's actually loving um, 
my music. Okay. She's in a Macklemore phase, which is amazing. She was really into Taylor Swift, and now she's pivoted and is like, Dad, let's just listen to your music. That's really cool. And I'm like, Sloan, I have been mixing for the last 12 hours. This is the last song that I want to play right now. Like when we finished Chant, we finished it. We did the music video. And if you've ever edited a music video, like you have to listen to the song like thousands of times to complete an edit. Yeah. And we finished the video and then Sloan was like, this is my favorite song. I want to listen to this every time we're in the car. I was like, I need a two-week break at least. Right, right, right. Let's talk about the song. It's phenomenal. Chant is uh, awesome. I mean, your flow on there, the chorus, uh, Tones and I sounds incredible. Yeah. Um, do you, based off the first verse, do you feel like an underdog now? Like what, do you feel like you have something to prove? I feel like I've always had something to prove. And I think that that something is to myself. Yeah. That's who I compete with. And yeah, I think that the the flight the plight of the independent artist has yeah. always been uh, that's my journey. And whenever I drop music, the landscape has changed. The landscape is very different from what it was five years ago. Yeah. Um, and there's different the, the streaming has changed, playlisting has changed, TikTok is something that you have to use in order to get your music out into the world. There's all these different platforms that weren't, you know, I mean, it was around five years ago, but it's like now it's like a necessity. It's around, around, yeah. And, um, but outside of that, all that social stuff is, is one part of it. And the most important part of it is just the art. And it's like, I step into the studio and I'm very competitive. I'm competitive, um, and the raps, I'm competitive in the melodies and the in the hooks and the songwriting that we do. I'm competitive with everything. And I think that if you don't have an underdog spirit, you get you get left behind. Yeah, yeah. And and I've always had that. I, I, I do this because I love the art first and foremost, but it's also a sense of competition. I heard that first verse and I was like, man, he is like he sounds like newbie hungry. It's yeah. it's amazing. Uh, what's what's like one goal you've set for yourself career wise? You could have said it a long time ago that you feel like you still haven't achieved five million TikTok followers. I just I just love that number. I'm going to get there. Um, I'm rooting for you. <laughs> yeah, thank you. I you know, what's a goal that I haven't achieved? I. I don't know. I've achieved a good amount. I don't I don't have. I don't have those types of thoughts. I want to make the best art possible yeah. and get it heard by as many people as possible. And that's truly always been the objective. It's not like, oh, you know, I want to I want to win this award. Or I want to get on that tour. Like if I could just, you know, yeah, yeah. get on the cover of that magazine. Like I, I've been blessed enough to do those things. But those were never my goals. The goal was to make the best music possible and to get it heard. I don't know if you read this or saw this. Uh, Tones and I said about her song um, Dance Monkey that more often than not, she hates that song. Mm. And she just feels like, you know, overall, it's not a good representation of who she is as an artist. Right. Uh, do you have a song, a hit song of your own that you feel that way about? No, I don't. Because like the wrist shop, which would be kind of like the obvious answer, um, I'm still, I still love Thrift Shop. Like I still, I, I love what it did for me. Um, I think that had I only had Thrift Shop, then that would have been like, oh God, they only know me for that. But luckily like that hasn't been my story. So um, in Thrift Shop, I'm still rapping. Like yeah. uh, I'm still spitting. So if there was like one song where I was like, man, I really dumbed that down and like, that's not good, but that's the thing that blow, blew up. I might feel that way, but. No, nah, I don't feel that way about these records. That well, have, that I, I, I think with that one, even though it comes off as maybe gimmicky, it's still very authentically you. Right. And you are still like spitting your butt off. So, I mean, right. you know, it's awesome. Uh, so I, I love Chant and I was like, oh, why isn't this the one that's getting the big push? And then we just heard uh, your your new new. That uh, new new. Yes. Maniac. It's incredible. Thank um, you. How did it come about? Who's on the hook? Is that you singing beautifully? No, never. Oh, okay, they don't okay. let me do the okay. hooks. All right. I I I try them and then they're like, "Yep, now let's, let's get somebody let's that can <laughs> sing." Um, no, that's uh that's my that's my friend Windsor okay. who's on the hook. And um it's actually a collaboration uh 
Ryan Lewis and Budo produced it. And Ryan had played me that hook. And it was just like guitar and Windsor. And he was like, yeah, Windsor doesn't want this. And I was like, all right, play it cool, play it cool. And I was like, well, I, I might want it sometime right. in the future. Now, can I have it? And he was like, yeah, you should take it. And um, yeah, Windsor just, it's like one of those hooks that immediately I was like, yo, this is an earworm. This is great. Yes. And, um, you know, we flushed out the production and turned it into what it is now. I wrote a ton. It was a fun record to write. You know, it's about, you know, a relationship that might not be the healthiest, but you still love that person. Yeah, yeah. And, um, you know, I played it for my, for my, for Sloan first before I played it for my wife. And she got like 30 seconds in and was just like, no, this is about mom. This is about, I, I, no, you guys are going to get a divorce. You guys are getting a divorce. And I was like, Sloan, this is not about mom. It's not. Bits and pieces from our past, maybe, but it's not about mom. And um, so then I finally played it for my wife and she was like, oh, this is a single. You know, Sloan went to your mom, uh, your wife beforehand and was like, mom, you know, Dad's got something. I don't want to. I don't want to spill the beans too much. Right. But you should talk to Dad. I don't want to stir up the beef, but uh, Dad's talking about you in the basement. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh man, that's adorable. I love it. Such a great. So, so is this a uh, part of an album? When is it dropping? This year, next year? Is it uh, full on you and Ryan Lewis? What? No, this is a. This is Ryan's. Um, I believe. No, this is a kind of a one off thing with Ryan. Okay. We might have one more in there. I'm not exactly sure, but yes. This is an album. I'm looking at my management like... Don't look at them. And they're like, yo, don't say no, anything. No, just go with the flow. No, Whatever feels yeah, right. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. Go with the flow. Um, yeah, this is, a, this is the chapter. Cool. And we are embarking on the chapter. And it is an album. And Maniac is, is up next. Wow. I love it. So then this and then... Early next year, you'll drop the third album with Ryan Lewis, right? That's what we're that's what we're looking at. <laughs> we are coming up on uh, the heist ten year anniversary, yeah, which is crazy. It's not ten years. Still, still, uh, we're still alive. Yeah, I love it. Thank you so much, man. Congratulations on everything. Your beautiful family, the new music. You you have hits on your hands. So thank you for taking the time. Thank you, brother. I appreciate it. 